don't do macros. They're not important. Learn from me. You don't need to count macros. What's up guys, it's Brady here with Gons and Oak and Nova. And in this video, I'm going to make a response to Greg Doucette's video titled, Why You Are Wrong About Counting Macros Explained. And we're just gonna dive into this. I'm gonna give kind of you know my feedback of what he was saying, um, why I might disagree with a few things, and um, why ultimately I think that macros really are important and why they are a great tool to use. So let's get into this. Before bed, it must be this amount of macros, and I'm a macros, and it meets your macros because I'm friendly with my macros. First off, I wanna start by saying this is not a hate video on Greg Doucette. I'm not a hater. I actually really enjoyed this video of his. And you know, I've watched a decent amount of his videos before. Um, I, I'm sure he's a really great coach. I'm sure he has you know a lot of experience, and I'm sure his methods that he uses end up working for people. So I'm not hating, uh, I'm not being like one of those guys that just nitpicks at everything people say, but watching this video is honestly just a really good topic and something that I wanted to talk about as well. And because I'm dieting right now for my show prep um, 14 weeks out, I've actually gotten a few kind of like questions and comments on Instagram and things like that uh, regarding some similar topics to this. So I really wanna talk about all of those. So hopefully you enjoy this small break from my show prep series that I'm doing right now. And uh, we're just gonna talk about macros, Greg Gousset, the things that he has to say and why I disagree and on, on some of them. So this is gonna be kinda of hard to do because his video is uh, just about 25 minutes long and I'm not gonna just talk about every single thing but I wanna talk about the main bits. So basically his claim is that macros don't matter because it's all about calories. Um, the plans that he gives people are calorie based only, not really macro based and people are still able to see great results that way. So talking about that, I agree and obviously I agree because that's just science. I have to agree. Uh, the energy balance is highly proven. Calories are what matters. I mean, that's that's just true. So I, I just don't wanna be the, one of those guys. I've, I've had so many examples on social media where I'll explain why maybe my, why muscular damage doesn't build much muscle. And then I'll get people to say like, like, oh yeah, you know, I, uh, I agree. I agree with that. Or people will say that they don't agree. And I'm just like, well, of course you have to agree. You know, it's, it's fact. You could disagree, but you would be wrong. So that being said, I, yeah, I agree, Greg. Like, of course, calories is what matters most. There's no way around that. I'm just thinking for the people that Greg and I mostly coach, I assume they're gonna be mostly people who lift weights. And if we're talking about people who lift weights, I really do think macros do matter. And if we were talking about like maybe, you know, coaching my parents for weight loss or something, my parents are like 50 years old, they don't train, uh, then yeah, maybe macros don't matter as much. But for people who work out, who lift weights, I'm gonna say that macros do kind of matter. And uh, I'm gonna kind of explain f several different points he brought up. I think the most, the most important takeaway from this entire thing though is that it's actually kind of hard to track calories accurately. And um, this is something I've gotten, a buddy of mine actually commented on my Instagram story because I was showing him how exact I was being with my macro plan. And he said, well, it doesn't really matter that much because people are on calories on the nutrition um, facts for foods, calories are all over the place. Like it, it might actually have 50 calories, but it says it has 35 because you're allowed to be within like 20 calories or something like that. And it's so true. So for instance, if you've ever used MyFitnessPal, you, you put in like your food or whatever you had, in this, let's say you ate something that had five carbs. Okay, so we know that carbs have four calories per gram. So if you have five carbs and each carb has four calories, then you do the math and you got 20 calories, right? But then on the label, it, it ends up saying it has 10 calories, <laughs> which makes no sense at all. So the first point I wanna make is if you're tracking calories using MyFitnessPal and you're just going by calories, not macros, um, then you're probably not actually tracking that accurately. So what I do and what I have my clients do is we pay attention to that macro number. If, if it says that you have 
um, 300 calories left over for the day, but really you only have like 15 carbs left for the day, you know something's messed up and it's guaranteed it's gonna be the calories because the macro breakdown on the nutrient label is actually really accurate. The calorie number, however, because of weird laws in America or wherever you're from, it's gonna be all over the place. Don't know why it's like that. It's really stupid actually. But just from um, a standpoint of, of being accurate with your tracking and whether it be calories or macros, you're going to be more accurate to the calories, which is what matters most. Greg, as you said, yeah, that's totally true. It's gonna matter most in the calories, but the most accurate way to make sure you're eating the calories that you think you're eating is to track them by macros. To Greg, I totally understand what you're saying though, is there are these stupid dieters like, oh, you have to be 30, 30, 40 on percentages of macros. You gotta, um, yeah, you have to eat this much protein, blah, 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 blah. It's all over the place. I definitely understand what Greg's saying in this video when he talks about how it's stupid to pay that much attention to these percentages and stuff like that. Oh, macros count. You need to have a blend, a 30, 30, 40 diet. No, it's the 20, 20, 60 diet. I'm talking about percents of each of the macros. Because at the end of the day, yeah, calories are what's gonna matter the most, but there's a few keys here that I think are really important and things that he said in the video um, that I, I honestly disagree with a little bit. So one of them, he was talking about protein. He says that most of his clients, he said, uh, I think he only said like two of his clients ever have not been eating enough protein. 1,700 people have hired me. Two have had not enough protein in their normal diets. Two out of that. The chances of you not already eating enough protein in your diet is almost zero. It's almost zero. So do you need to sit there and count, oh my God, I need this much protein because I'm not eating enough protein because I need more protein. And he shared some research showing how much protein you really need. And uh, that's the, one of the issues right there is if we're training guys who lift weights, then chances are they're not eating enough protein um, or just on their own. And there's two different guidelines to protein. There's the health guideline, how much protein you should be eating, and there's the guideline of how much you should be eating if you're trying to build muscle or maintain as much muscle as possible while dieting. And so for instance, for myself, I weigh 170 pounds. Um, the nutritional guideline for my protein, I could be healthy eating like 60 grams of protein, but am I gonna be optimizing my muscular gains um, or maintaining my muscle optimally at all during my prep or, or just while dieting if I'm only eating 60 grams of protein a day? Absolutely not. We know that there's diminishing returns, so you can't just eat a million grams of protein and, and get super jacked because protein, protein, protein and stuff, uh, like he was saying in the video. But we do know that, yeah, you should probably eat, be eating a high protein diet. And most people, I mean, I, I think I can say this with confidence, most people are not eating one gram of protein a day with ease. So, I mean, for me, that's 170 grams of protein. That's not necessarily easy for me unless I'm tracking. Otherwise, if it were up to me, I'd be eating like maybe 70 grams a day and then the rest would just be crap and carbs and stupid stuff like that. I would definitely not be eating enough protein and nor would tons of other people. So by tracking macros, like you're gonna make sure that you're actually getting enough protein to maintain your muscle mass while dieting, to build muscle while trying to get bigger. And we're not using the guidelines for health, which is not as optimal as, as the guidelines for like building muscle, maintaining muscle. So in that regards, yeah, it's actually really important to be tracking your macros and making sure that you're consistently eating enough protein for these specific goals. And, and not only that too, but protein actually has, um, and, and fat, I wanna talk about that in a second, but protein has a satiety uh, properties to it, meaning like when you eat protein, you're gonna feel fuller. So if you're trying to diet harshly and, and it's hard for you because you're feeling hungry, well, eating that higher protein diet is gonna help you not feel as hungry, which is gonna help you adhere to your diet. So, but if you're not tracking macros and maybe you're not eating as much protein as you could be or should be, then you might be feeling hungrier from it, which might interfere uh, with your diet. Now on to fat, because once again, Greg was kind of making fun of the idea of having certain percentages. And though, yeah, I'm trying to agree where it doesn't have to be this exactly perfect number, um, there are a lot of benefits to eating in some sort of structured number. When you're creating your macro diet regarding how much fat you should be eating. Um, I think it's pretty much agreed upon in that 20 to 30% range is going to be like that sweet spot where you're going to be healthy. You could have more than 30% of your fat and nothing would happen. As long as you're in a caloric deficit, you'll still lose weight. Um, but the main thing here is fat is essential. 
So proteins and fats are essential. Carbs are not essential. So we're not going to talk about carbs in the same way that we talk about fat here. Um, we do get energy from fat, not nearly as much as we do from carbs. Um, but fat is really important for other aspects inside the body. One of the main important bits I would say is hormonal balance and production. So when you're dieting, it's very easy for our hormones to get a little whack. And uh, not that that's going to be that much of an issue for most people, but we're, when you're talking about someone who's prepping or dieting really harshly, testosterone is going to tank. If you're a dude, um, you have leptin, ghrelin, all sorts of things fluctuating in your inside your body. And a big part of keeping your hormone levels healthy, you know, we can't stop them from going down while dieting. That's just kind of a, a natural process during star, starving ourselves. <laughs> what we can do is make sure that we don't run into any health issues because we actually do need enough fat in our diets to be healthy. And so this is kind of individualized as well, but some people really struggle eating enough fat in their diet when, when they're dieting. For me, I'm not kidding. I have to usually, at the end of the day, I have to have like a tablespoon or two of peanut butter in order to hit my fat because otherwise I'll have like 15% fat, maybe even less, um, which is not healthy. It's just not healthy. Um, will I still lose weight? Yeah, I still will lose weight because caloric deficit is that's what matters most, right? But the macros still matter because I need to be eating enough fat to be healthy. It is essential. I need, I need that. I need to make sure I'm eating enough fat. But not only that, when you eat fat, there's actually a release of a hormone that comes over to your brain and tells you that you're satisfied. So eating enough fat and making sure that you are eating enough fat by tracking macros is going to help you uh, feel fuller too. Um, so now we have protein and fats that both help you feel fuller. And that's super important because if you're dieting and you're super hungry all the time, it sucks. But these are actually going to help you feel fuller. Once again, tracking macros helps you out with that. And lastly, with carbs. So carbs, like I said, they aren't essential, but they're still important. And Greg actually posted a study explaining how carbs are protein sparing, but I think he used it not in the best context of it that he could have. Um, so he was saying like, you're going to eat enough protein. And if you don't, it's okay because you're going to have carbs and carbs are protein sparing. But I don't think it's quite that simple. Um, understanding carbs a little bit more carbs actually help us maintain our muscle mass when we're dieting, which is something people don't usually realize. It's, it's really common for like old school guys to just cut carbs super hard. That is not a good idea. Carbs are not only going to give us our energy for workouts and improve our performance, which can help us maintain muscle mass, but carbs themselves help us maintain muscle mass because they are protein sparing. So that's another reason why tracking macros actually can be really beneficial to make sure that you're eating enough carbs so that you can maintain your muscle mass. Um, you can kind of play around and find how many carbs you need per day to maintain a high performance in the gym, which will help you look better. Um, if you're building muscle, it's going to help you build muscle better by better workouts. If you're dieting, it's going to help you have better performance in the gym and help you maintain your muscle mass more, um, help you fill out a little bit more too, because it stores glycogen inside the muscles. Um, but without tracking macros, we don't really know how much we're getting. We're kind of all over the place. Maybe one day you have a ton and you feel good and you have no idea why the next day you didn't have that much and you feel like crap and you don't know why. I guess to conclude this, Greg saying that macro tracking is dumb, you don't need to do it, um, it's all about calories. It's mostly true, but I disagree that macros aren't a good tool to use and that we should just completely ignore them. Um, I agree that we don't need to be like ridiculous about it. We don't need to say, oh man, like I'm supposed to be eating 25% fat and yesterday I had 27, like I'm screwed, this is bad. Um, because honestly, that's not gonna make much of a difference at all. But as the general guideline, yeah, you probably should be in that 20 to 30 range for fats. Um, you should be having probably around one gram of protein per pound of body weight to maintain muscle mass as much as possible when you're dieting and building muscle. And the carbs should probably be the rest so that you're making sure you're maintaining as much muscle mass as possible. You're having as quality of workouts and performing as good as possible to maintain your muscle mass. And um, they all just like work together really well. And ultimately the biggest picture here, which is something I already mentioned, is tracking macros are gonna be the most accurate way to track calories because the system sucks these days and nutritional facts and labels are crap. I don't know why, but they aren't accurate. So unless you're doing the math and looking at every single 
a macro and then like calculating, okay, this is what it is, which you could do. Uh, that to me sounds like way more work than just following a macro plan on my fitness pal. So that is my conclusion with this video. So Greg, I really enjoyed your video. I appreciate you bringing up a great topic and um, we do appreciate your knowledge and your experience with coaching. I thought that I would just share my side of it with my experience and my knowledge. And um, I guess people can just pick what is best for them. As for people who are going to the gym, who have physique goals or strength goals, I do think that macros are the best way to go without being you know, ridiculous about it like we agreed. Um, and maybe people who don't really care about going to the gym and maybe who are just trying to live their lives and lose a little bit of weight, then hey, maybe calories and just tracking calories is best for you anyway guys if you agree with this hit the thumbs up button if you disagree hit the thumbs up button. Uh, leave a comment below what you think and your experience with tracking either macros or just calories either way i hope you reach your fitness goal in whichever way is best for you we're gonna get back on the show prep series here in a little bit i just thought i would make this standalone video to uh, explain what i thought was a really good topic to discuss so anyway we will see you in the next video peace out and bye